The future of the EU is in doubt as Italexit, Frexit, Swexit, and Nexit sentiment surge. In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest controversy that's absolutely exploding calls to leave the EU, how Italy, France, Sweden, and the Netherlands are leading the way to a potential exit, and why it is that the coronavirus may indeed ultimately be fatal to the European Union itself. You're not. Good one to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Wonderful to be with you, as always. We're here to give you each and every day conservative hope in the midst of these turbulent times, helping you to think better so you can feel better. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We would love to have you here as a regular part of this channel. And hey, as of last, uh, was it yesterday, Parlor is back. And so are our 60,000 subscribers there. It's wonderful to be back with everyone over there. And so for you Parlor fans, make sure to click on the link below and subscribe to my Parlor channel. And let's together support the return of this wonderful alt tech site. Before we begin, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. And that's Biotrust and their awesome immune system supporting product ageless body. With our rapid advances in science over the years, there are much more powerful ways, much more effective ways to boost your immune system than just taking mega doses of vitamin C. In fact, our sponsors over at Biotrust have combined four of the world's best immune-supporting powerhouses, along with that mega dose of vitamin C, into their number one immune support product, Ageless Body. Simply put, Ageless Body provides you five of the most powerful immune support ingredients available, including their number one immune support recommendation, turmeric, which has 46 times better absorption than most other forms. And best of all, if you click on that link below today, you're going to now get Ageless Body at their lowest price ever with 51% off and free U.S. shipping to boot. So do not wait. Click on that link or go to agewithstevetrulli.com. You'd be glad that you did. All right, gang, let's dive right in here with the coronavirus lockdowns continuing unabated throughout Europe. What's called Euroscepticism, or a hostility towards the European Union, is sweeping throughout the continent. Just the other day, it was reported that Romania is currently experiencing its own wave of noticeable Euroscepticism, along with the Slovaks and Greeks. But this, as it turns out, is just the tip of the iceberg of anti-EU sentiments that appear to be growing by the day. Now, if you're not familiar with the latest issue that's driving this frustration, this fresh wave of Euroscepticism, it's what many are calling the vaccine fiasco that's been bumbled by the EU, the European Union. So the Anglo-Swedish company AstraZeneca, which the EU has contracted to deliver the vaccine, they reportedly purchased upwards of about 400 million doses. They recently announced that the vaccine rollout would be delayed due to production issues. As of now, they've only been able to deliver about 31 million doses to the EU. But in AstraZeneca's defense, the production issues have been hampered by the EU's draconian and Byzantine regulation systems, which are being blamed, at least in part, for slowing down production. And so needless to say, the delays in vaccine procurement, you know, European population, they're just starting to get very very upset at all this. Now, just to give you a sense of how this is playing into Euroscepticism, in radical contrast to this fiasco, the nation of Britain, which of course has successfully emancipated itself from the EU, at least for, in the most part, sorry, Northern Ireland, right? But regardless, I believe at this point, nearly 10 million Brits have been vaccinated in the UK. It's the third largest total in the world. By contrast, the whole of the European Union has barely vaccinated 10 million people, despite the fact that they have 27 member nations. So it's just an abject disaster. And so needless to say, the EU's vaccine fiasco is proving, it's provoking a new wave of Euroscepticism that's sweeping the continent. So for example, in Italy, the COVID outbreak and the incompetence of the response from Brussels was so bad that relatively recent polling shows that the Italians have had it with the EU. The Italian polling and research institute Termo Metro Politico conducted a study to measure the opinion among Italians of the European Union. What they found was that over 40% of those sampled wanted to leave both the EU and the Eurozone, demonstrating a massive surge in discontent among the Italian population over the EU's inept indifference towards their nation during this whole their whole struggle with the coronavirus. Now, if you don't know the difference, you've got the EU, the European Union, that's comprised of the 27 member nations, 
whereas the eurozone is comprised of those nations that share in using the euro as their currency. So what we found in this study is that 40% of Italians want to leave both. So an astonishing 40% of Italians want to leave both the European Union and the Eurozone. They want to chuck the Euro. I guess they'll bring back the Lira, some kind of national currency. In fact, we found an additional 6% of Italians want to leave the EU, but not the Euro. So they're wanting to hold on to the currency, which in turn means that a full 46% of Italians want to leave the EU in some way, shape, or form. But then they found an additional 7% want to chuck the Eurozone. They want to chuck the currency of the EU. So what that means is over 53% of Italians, according to the survey, want to either leave the EU, right, and or they want a restoration of national sovereignty in terms of a national currency. And this compares with just 41% who said that they wanted to remain in the EU. So we're now seeing polls shift decisively in favor of an anti-EU sentiment among Italians. And these your skeptical attitudes are contributing to enormous instability right now in the Italian government. Their leftist government collapsed. And in order to avoid a snap election that's almost guaranteed to result in the rise of the nationalist right, led by Legas Matteo Savini and the Brothers of Italy's uh, Giorgio Maloney, they'll easily have a governing coalition. They're installing instead what's called a technocratic government that already appears to be a total disappointment in terms of how much they're willing to capitulate to the bullies in Brussels. But Italy is not alone. There's renewed talks of Swexit going on here, right? Which involves Sweden moving closer and closer to a Brexit-like relationship with Brussels. The British Express is reporting that Swexit sentiments have reached a new high after a 2016 survey found that 36% of Swedes were in favor of quitting the EU, while only 32% wanted to stay with it. Again, given the vaccine company AstraZeneca is Swedish, there's obviously some disillusionment among the Swedish population over why they've had to wait for vaccinations, for getting jabbed, as the Brits like to say. I love it. Then there's what's called Nexit, which is the potential exit of the Netherlands. In fact, just today, a new piece was published in the British Express on how the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte, who is an avid Europhile, has nevertheless had to come out and become one of Brussels' staunchest critics because the Dutch are so upset over the EU and its handling of the whole COVID lockdowns and vaccinations. Geert Wilders of the Dutch Freedom Party, he's come out and openly stated that the EU is officially dead. There's no point in the Netherlands being a part of this union any longer. And things have been made all the worse as massive protests have erupted in response to the EU's draconian COVID lockdowns. It's being widely reported that there have been several nights of violent protests and rioting across the nation, causing businesses to close up early and board up. There have been hundreds of arrests across the country. Riots actually started with the torching of a coronavirus testing center in a fishing village, which is a stark symbol of the anger that's been triggered around the nation over the tough coronavirus lockdown that's been enforced since mid-December. The protests have turned increasingly violent with rioters pelting police with rocks, fireworks, Molotov cocktails, including the looting and vandalizing of a number of shops in the cities, cities of Rotterdam and Den Bosch. And then finally, and perhaps most significant of all, we are seeing a surge in Frexit sentiments in France. Now, before we get into that, I do want to make sure you got our free gift. It's just for you. Make sure to click on the link below and download your own fake news antidote. We have updated our compilation of over 30 alternative news sites that I go to for my news each and every single day, all conservative, all celebrating Trump and the nationalist populist revolt going all over the world. And boy, do we need these news resources now more than ever. You can download your own copy of our updated fake news antidote completely free at the link down below in the pinned comments section. And you'll have a ready list of your go-to sites that you'll definitely enjoy and will inspire you through these trying times. It's yours absolutely free by clicking on the link below. It is my gift to you. Enjoy it. All right. It is being reported. That French President Emmanuel Macron is under enormous pressure to hold a Frexit referendum, a French version of Brexit. 
especially in light of the vaccine fiasco in Brussels. Now, we have to remember that the notion of Frexit was already rather popular in France. Just a few months after he was elected, Macron admitted in an interview that if a referendum were allowed, the French public would most likely vote to leave the EU. And his opinion was backed up by research from Edinburgh University that found that 53% of French would like to hold their own vote on EU membership. And we're seeing similar numbers again in Spain and, and Germany, where more and more people are in favor of holding a referendum than those who are opposed to such an idea. Now, this, of course, was before the coronavirus. Since the advent of the virus and all the draconian lockdown measures, talk of Frexit, which had died down over the last couple of years, suddenly resurfaced. Last spring, John Kiger over at The Spectator published a fascinating article on whether the coronavirus will ultimately lead to a Frexit. What he noticed was that the coronavirus was provoking a course among French voters who were all saying that they wanted to, in their words, take back control across the political spectrum. And this is because the epidemic was, in effect, laying uh, laying bare for all to see France's absolute dependence on the EU for test kits and ventilators and masks and the like. So this has contributed to the return of the notion of Frexit in the hearts and minds of an increasing number of French voters. So it's no coincidence that pundits are predicting that France will most likely be the next nation to leave the European Union. So there's no question that the COVID-19 outbreak has done far more than weaken immune systems and stretch medical facilities to their limit. It appears that the virus may end up being fatal to the European Union itself. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. You definitely want to check out my latest video. I've just uploaded it on the colossal fall of the Cuomo bros, as Governor Andrew Cuomo is being threatened with impeachment, all as his brother's CNN show is tanking in the ratings. You are not going to want to miss it. So make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.